Hello YouTube viewers and random James Bond fans. Over the past few years, Playmobil have been taking that big leap from producing kids toys to producing kids toys which adult collectors can pick up as well. The Ghostbusters Ecto-1 and 1A remain two of my all-time favourite toy versions of the car. They then went two for two with the Back to the Future DeLorean offering gullwing doors as well as interchangeable components. Now they're going for the hat trick. We haven't seen many toy recreations of the gadget laden cars in the Bond movies beyond the excellent Corgi collectibles. There's been a significant gap in the market when it comes to Bond memorabilia which Playmobil are hoping to plug with this, the Aston Martin DB5 with modifications from Goldfinger, arguably the best and well-known mode of transport for 007, has popped up again and again throughout the 60-year history of the franchise. So naturally, it would be the car to pick for Playmobil's rapidly expanding movie and TV show vehicle line. But can they keep the winning streak going strong? Well, only one way to find out. Starting off with the packaging, it's the usual Playmobil affair. There's no window display of any kind as the car has to be assembled, so instead we get a very stylish image of the car on a grey and black background. We get the Playmobil logo on the top corner with the 007 and Aston Martin logos on the opposing side. It is the James Bond Aston Martin DB5 Goldfinger edition, plus we get some images of the included figures as well as their names beneath. The back of the box retains the simplistic design with several windows demonstrating some of the features of the car. Opening up the box, I like what they've done here, giving us a nice layout with sections for the car as well as for each figure. Some very effective presentation work. So enough about the box, let's open it up and take a look at the car itself. Okay, so here we have the Aston Martin, and on first look, it's been rendered really well. On the front, we get the Aston badge, as well as the chrome silver grille and bumper, the headlights, indicators, and number plate. The top features detailing of the hood, but sadly, this does not open, and it's simply one singular molded piece. At either side, you can see the chrome silver rear view mirrors, which look very good. On the sides, you can see the wheels, which, much like most Playmobil toys, seem very out of proportion and are quite thick. But we do get the spoke decals on the hubs, and the tire slashers built into these, but they're just a dull grey, and they're not chromed, which is a bit of a shame. There is detailing of doors on both sides, but again, a flaw in most Playmobil toys is that these are all one piece and cannot open, which is a bit disappointing. The front windshield is very clear and moulded perfectly, but the top is a little bit rough, thanks to these removable panels, as well as moulding of the section of the roof, which removes on the real car. There are no windows on either door, but these rear windows, as well as the back, feature the same transparent plastic as the windshield and looks extremely good. On the rear, we get more moulded detail of the boot, but much like the hood, this does not open. Plus, you can see the bulletproof shield is housed here too. The tail light fins look great and include red tail lights, reverse lights and indicators as well. We get the latch for the boot and the number plate below with a GB sticker on one side and the DB5 logo on the other. At the bottom the rear chrome bumper looks excellent and includes paint apps of red tail lights here too. Finally the underside looks very plastic and cheap but offers some nice detail of the various components, the spur wheel section and the exhaust but more on that later. And that's also where we find a copious smuttering of legal stir Removing the top panels gives us a decent look at the interior, where you can see they've replicated the wooden steering wheel, driver, passenger and rear seats, which all look very nice indeed. Even the dashboard looks great, and is complemented by the GPS tracking screen, the gear stick with the red ejector seat button, and the centre armrest hiding all the gadget buttons. It's a bit rough, but I like that some attention has been paid to these pivotal interior components. So overall for detail, I like it, but there are a few flaws and small issues here and there. Turning to features, Playmobil have tried to pack in as much as possible when it comes to the Q branch installed gadgets. The rotating license plate feature has been included, which is operated manually, switching between the UK, the French and the Swiss license plate numbers. This feature is also available on the rear of the car, but the two are not connected, so both have to be switched and changed manually. Another interesting feature here is that the front and rear rams, which were included on the classic Corgi toy, but never actually seen in the movies, have been included too. These have to be pulled out individually from the front and the rear bumpers and slid back into place. The machine guns behind the lights on the front are included too, but we're starting to notice a pattern here, aren't we? As these two must be pulled out manually and don't really look much different when extended out, which is a bit of a shame. All four wheels have incorporated the tyre slashers, which... Say it with me now, I have to be manually pulled out from the centre of the wheel. I do like this, however, as they could easily have just made these separate pieces which peg on, meaning they could be easily lost, but instead they're incorporated as part of the actual vehicle. On the back we get the rear bulletproof plate, which is slid up and clicks into place, where you can see some bullet marks on the back of it, which is a very nice touch. Finally, there is the rear exhaust pipes. Whatever you do, don't press down on them, because you will release this section of the roof and engage and fire the passenger ejector seat. Clearly Playmobil don't joke about their work. 
The ejector seat isn't spring-loaded and more forced upward using pressure, so it does the trick very well. The seat travels a fair distance, even with the Playmobil figure attached. Resetting it can be a little bit awkward, but as long as it slid down these rails and snapped into place, it'll work again just fine. The only trouble is that the entire section of the roof pops off, not just the part that's supposed to. That would be okay, aside from the fact that they sculpted that part into the roof, leaving it looking, well, messy. Likewise, this smaller section is also removable, allowing figures to be placed in the driver's seat easily. Speaking of the figures, a total of four are included here. James Bond, Eric Goldfinger, Oddjob, and a henchman. Truth be told, I've never really been a fan of Playmobil figures. They're dangerously close to pop vinyls, as they all look exactly the same, aside from some mould and printed design changes. I mean, look at these. They're all exactly the same figure, aside from the moulding changes to the heads and the designs printed onto the bodies. Bond has the same body as the henchman, while Oddjob and Goldfinger have the same body. That's good, isn't it? They didn't even get the details right, as Bond wasn't wearing a tuxedo at any point while driving the DB5 in the movie. They're just so annoyingly generic. And don't tell me the face on that henchman isn't wildly racist. Okay, okay, a bit of a step too far, but you get the point. The figures are wildly out of scale when displayed next to the car, but they do look good when inside it, but only two can fit, so sadly not all the lads can go on a road trip. Ah, well, yes, I know the four of them were never in the car together. Shut up, I was just kidding. Anyway... We get some accessories. Bond comes with his Walther PPK. Oh, wait. No, he doesn't. He has no guns have been included in this set. Instead, he comes with a lethal pair of... binoculars. Look, they have a rubber strap so they can hang from his neck. How exciting. And all four figures get two bricks of gold each. Lovely. These are generic Playmobil pieces which are stuck together so you can't recreate Bond throwing gold bricks at odd job. That's good, isn't it? And doing a brief size comparison, you can see the DB5 is in a very, very weird scale, being larger than the DeLorean, but somewhat smaller than the Ecto-1. So, overall, what do I think of the Playmobil Aston Martin DB5? Well, by Playmobil standards, it's the weakest of the vehicles I've reviewed so far, but also the most interesting in terms of play features. Likewise, it's the one that falls the shortest when it comes to potential gone to waste. How about some electronic lights for the front and tail lights, or even just the front lights? The gadgets should have been spring-loaded. It might be because I grew up with the Corgi toys, which were a bit brittle for play, but the gadgets deployed so effectively via being connected to levers at the bottom of the car. It made it feel much more like a Bond car than having to activate them in such a manual and non-impressive or exciting way. That's not to say that this isn't an overly impressive toy, but it's just that. It's a toy. Tough and reinforced for kids to reenact chase sequences from the movies with, but a bit lacking in the collector department. But ultimately... I want to see more James Bond toys and collectibles out there. And this is a great first step. I want to see a toy of the Lotus Esprit, the Aston Martin Vantage, or even the BMW Z8 by Playmobil. It may not be as strong as the Recto-1s or the DeLorean, but it's a fun little collectible all the same. But make no mistake, it's definitely geared more toward kids, and less so adults. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you again real soon. Farewell. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed this video. And why not be extra awesome like all of these people and support us on Patreon? Links are in the description. Until next time, farewell.